Hey guys, today we're gonna to be doing a get ready with me. I'm gonna be testing out some brand new drugstore makeup that just came in. I have some new stuff from CoverGirl, L'Oreal, Milani, and e.l.f. And I'm also gonna be doing a wear test so we can see how all of these hold up throughout the day. So if that sounds good to you guys, why don't we go ahead and jump right in and get started. Right, guys so before we start i'm just gonna apply some lip balm this is the catrice lip jam in the strawberry shade my lips are so dry yesterday i was wearing uh, one of the products that i'm going to talk about today which is the CoverGirl lip markers i tried on all the colors that i got and as i was like trying them on and removing them Oh my gosh, my lips are so dry right now. So this is such a good affordable lip balm. I've really been loving these and you can get them over on Amazon. So as far as the new products go, I guess let's start with brows. And I got this new brow pencil from e.l.f. This is called the Instant Lift Waterproof Brow Pencil. I got it in two shades because I wasn't sure which one I was gonna be. And you have the pencil on one end and then a spoolie on the other. To be honest, these pencils look a little bit thicker than I'm used to. I typically either use a brow pen or if I do use a pencil, it's one of the micro tip pencils. I just feel like they give the most natural looking results because you can really mimic the look of hairs with a tiny little pencil. Thicker ones like this can sometimes give a bolder and less natural result. So I guess we'll see how this goes. I think I'm gonna use the neutral brown shade because I feel like the blonde one is a little too warm and I think this might even be a little bit too warm for me as well. But that's kind of just a struggle that I have with brow products in general. I have very ashy toned brows, so most brow colors I find are too warm. I normally use brow gel first and then I go in with a brow pen. That's sort of been my thing for the last year or so, but I find that that doesn't always work with a pencil. If you put the gel in first, then it's kind of too wet and the pencil won't work. So I'm just going to apply this first and then we'll go in with gel afterwards. But I actually like how soft this pencil is. I don't feel like I have to press really hard. It's filling in my brows really easily, which is nice. But even though I've only been using it for about 30 seconds, I have a complaint about it already. <laughs> okay, so this is already getting very dull. Um, I noticed when I did the first couple strokes, it was good. Now all of a sudden the tip is just not really making the hair like strokes anymore. And I actually had to just twist it up a little bit because it got all the way down to the rim. And I think that's because this is just so soft, it's wearing down super fast. So I don't love that. I feel like this brow pencil is gonna be gone in a couple of days <laughs> at the rate that it's going, but I don't know, we'll have to see. I'm not like super impressed right now. Um, and I did order the new CoverGirl brow pencils and those are actually the micro tip style. And I was really hoping they would come today. I found them on Amazon and sadly they got delayed. So they're not coming until really late tonight. And I have to do this video today. So unfortunately I'll have to test those out another time, but those are the ones that I was more excited about for sure. But back to this brow pencil, I think this is giving kind of a softer look. It's like, the effect that you would get when you fill in your brows with a powder where you don't really see the hair like strokes. They just all kind of like meld together in just like a soft filled in brow, which is fine. I think some people really love that look. I personally like to kind of draw the individual hairs so that you can see them. But I know a lot of people just in my everyday life that love to just fill in with a powder. And this really gives you that result, but I feel like it's easier to do it with a pencil. So this just has a really nice softness to it. And I do think the color is actually okay. Now that my brows are filled in, I think it matches pretty well. But like I said, 
my one complaint with this is that the tip just gets worn down so quickly. So I'm not loving that aspect of it. I'm just gonna set my brows with the Too Faced Fluff and Hold. I know this isn't drugstore, but unfortunately I don't have a drugstore brow gel at the moment. I did also order the CoverGirl one, the new one that they just came out with, but again, that one is also delayed and it's coming late tonight. So I'm just gonna set it with this for now. All right, let's move on to foundation. I have a new one from CoverGirl. This looks pretty exciting. This is the Simply Ageless Skin Perfecting Essence. This says that it's a hydro fresh tint. It has 0.5% Bakuchiol, which is a plant-based retinol alternative. And it says that this is a skincare and makeup hybrid with micro droplet technology. Pigmented capsules blend easily to distribute an even tint. Your complexion looks plump, refreshed, and more youthful. And I got it in the shade Light. So this, when I first saw it, it kind of reminded me of the Alme. What the heck was that called? Do you remember the Alme foundation that had the little beads and they kind of burst and it was supposed to like make your exact right color? It kind of reminds me of that, but this is a really interesting texture. It actually looks kind of like an essence, like skincare. It's it's really runny and it has these little beads in it. So, oh, this is so cool. All right, I'm just gonna apply this with my fingers because honestly, it feels like I'm putting skincare on. And oh, I can see the color. All right, this looks like a pretty decent match. It's not too yellow and it's not too pink. So it's likely not gonna be giving a lot of coverage, but it's a skin tint, so it's kind of expected. Right away, I love how this feels. I just applied my skincare a little while ago and it just feels like I'm adding more skincare, basically. My skin feels really soft, really dewy. This feels like it's moisturizing so well. It's like a nice drink for my dry skin. I honestly love the texture of it, and I think this is such a cool idea to put pigment into a skincare product. I used to do that, remember back years ago now, when all of these brands were coming out with the foundation drops that you could kind of put into different things. I remember I had the NYX one and number seven made one, and I used to actually put those foundation drops into skincare sometimes, and that's what this reminds me of. I'm kind of surprised actually that nobody's done it before, and I know that a lot of foundations claim that they have skincare in them or skincare benefits, but most of the time it's like a tiny little amount. For me, this product kind of feels like the opposite. It feels like more skincare, less makeup. Um, but looking at my face right now, this actually has way better coverage than I initially thought it was going to. I feel like it evened out my skin tone really well and it does not look like I'm wearing makeup at all. When I look in the mirror, I don't see anything. I wanna just zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm seeing. I feel like even really close up, this just looks like my skin. I don't see any evidence of makeup. It's not sitting in any fine lines or pores. It's not caking up anywhere. This could be one of the most natural foundations, even skin tints that I've ever tried. And I think that the finish on this product has a lot to do with it. It's not overly dewy like a lot of skin tints are, where even if it doesn't look like heavy like foundation, it still looks like you have something on your face because your face is all shiny and dewy. But with this, it just kind of like sank right in and it just is still like my natural skin finish. It's not too glowy or too matte. It's just that perfect in between. Wow, I am just absolutely blown away by this right now. This is incredible. I hope it wears well throughout the day and I'm definitely going to do a wear test. I actually started very early this morning because my son has his Christmas concert tonight and I have to wrap up this video before we go, but I still wanna make sure that I'm able to do a wear test and we can see what this looks like at the end of the day. But so far, I love it. Next up, I have two brand new concealers from the drugstore and I wasn't sure which one I was gonna use and then I thought, you know what? I have two eyes, I'm just gonna use both. So I'm gonna use the Revlon one over on this side and the L'Oreal True Match over here. So the Revlon one, let's take a look at that one first. This is called Flex. Wear Full Cover Concealer. It's supposed to wear for 24 hours, and I'm assuming by the name that it's supposed to be full coverage. I got it in the shade 10 Vanilla. And then the L'Oreal True Match is supposed to be a radiant serum concealer. It has 1.5% hyaluronic acid, plus caffeine to help depuff your eyes. So this seems like the complete opposite of the Revlon one. I got it in the shade Light C2. All right, so let's start with the Revlon first over on this side. I'm just gonna put a little right here because I have this discoloration 
in my outer corner and then I usually like to put some just on the inner corner. I don't like to put it right here because that's where I have some fine lines. So I do blend it into the center, but I just try not to put like too much in that area. And this is actually blending in so quickly. I hardly had to do anything and it's already gone. It feels like a really quick drying formula and I actually like that because I think quicker drying concealers don't have a tendency to crease as much as those that stay dewy for a while. So it doesn't look dry, which is great. And I feel like it gave pretty good coverage. You can kind of see before and after, even though it claims to be full coverage, I didn't feel like it was overly thick or cakey. It just blended right into my skin really smoothly. So, so far so good. And I will zoom you guys in and show you these close up. All right, and then over here, let's do the L'Oreal True Match. I'm just gonna put it in the same exact two spots. And I'm gonna use the other side of the sponge for this one, just so I don't contaminate the product. Um, but yeah, this one feels a little bit thinner but it's blending in just as fast. And I also think this one has pretty decent coverage too. If I look closer in the mirror, yeah, I kind of feel like the Revlon one is maybe just covering a little bit better than this one, but I'd say they're pretty close. Let me go ahead and just zoom you guys in and we'll take a closer look. All right, so yeah, over here we have the Revlon and I think it just did a really good job at hiding some of the darkness on the outer corner and on the inner corner. Over here, I still see a little bit of the darkness on this outer edge that the L'Oreal didn't cover. So it's not quite as full coverage as the Revlon one over here, but I think both of them look really smooth under my eyes right now. I'm not noticing any kind of creasing. I don't think either one looks dry. I think they both look really good. So I think which one you choose would just depend on how much coverage you need in your eye area. Also, before we move on, just another quick note about the L'Oreal True Match. It says that it's a radiant, serum concealer, but I don't really see radiance going on with this. It doesn't have a glow. It doesn't look, you know, sparkly or anything like that. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that it's not going to be like a super glowy formula because when I first saw that it was kind of giving me pause. So I was hoping that it wasn't and really it goes on without any kind of glow. Moving on, we have a new bronzer from Milani. This is their Cheek Kiss Cream bronzer and I was so excited for this because I love their Cheek Kiss Cream blushes. Those are some of my favorites, drugstore or high end. I love the formula because it's not sticky and it just like really melts into your skin so easily. So I ended up getting the lightest shade in the bronzer, but it comes in four shades all together and it says that it gives a sun-kissed glow year round. It's a lightweight, ultra blendable cream bronzer with a buildable soft matte finish that's never orange. So it was really hard to tell about the shades on the Ulta website, I did feel like the deeper shades looked orangey, which is why I didn't try to go for the second to lightest shade too, because sometimes that'll work for me as well. I'm not always the lightest shade, but I felt like in this case, the lightest shade looked the least orange. Again, we can't always trust the Ulta website though when it comes to colors. They're usually not the most accurate, um, but when I got this home, I feel like it's pretty good. It looks pretty neutral. It doesn't look overly orange, but it's not cool toned either. So so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this with the BK Beauty 107 brush and I'm just gonna dip it right in the pan and we'll just apply right to my cheeks. Yeah, oh wow, this is so seamless. It's just like the blushes, I love it. I love how quickly it just melts into the skin. It's so thin and then instantly it dries right to a powder. So it's just super blendable. It's not the type of product that's gonna lift up your foundation underneath either. And I think creams just look so natural, especially if you have really dry skin. Sometimes layering too much powder makes it look dry, but with a cream, it's just gonna look like your natural skin. And on top of this CoverGirl foundation, it looks especially natural, so I love that. I think this color is really good. It's really natural. I don't feel like it looks overtly like I'm wearing bronzer. It just warms up my face a little, and that's kind of the whole point. And then for blush, I figured I'd just stick with the whole cream theme. So this is the Florence by Mills Cheeky Pop Blush Stick, and I have to say, these are incredible. I've actually been wearing them every single day since last week when I did a video on them. This is the shade Lavish Lena, by the way. And in that video, I was talking about like the top rated newest makeup that's come out recently. And these have like a 4.8 out of five stars on the Ulta website. And I really, I've never been super impressed with anything from this brand before, but I was really intrigued by the reviews. And it's like the most seamless cream blush ever. 
It's weightless, it dries down to a powder. It actually kind of reminds me of the Milani Cheek Kiss ones, but just in stick form. And it's super long lasting. In that video I did a wear test, I put it on in the morning and by the end of the video, it still looked like freshly applied. It was amazing. So these are really my new favorite. I have two shades now, but I, I'm kind of wanting to go back and get all the rest of the colors because they're just that good. All right, so when it comes to eyes, unfortunately I don't have any new drugstore eyeshadows. So I'm just gonna pull out my old favorite, Stone Cold Fox, because this is the palette that I wear when I don't know what to wear. It's just such a good everyday neutral palette. So I figured since I'm wearing gray, I'll just do something a little more on the gray side. So I'm gonna pick up this shade You Rock right here and I'm just gonna start blending that into my crease. And this is the BK Beauty A503 brush. I just love Angie's whole collection because I feel like the brushes are great for hooded eyes. They're just a nice smaller size. So I love how I can get just a little bit more precise with them. All right, next I think I'm gonna go into this really dark charcoal shade called Rumor Mill. And this is the smaller A504 brush. So I'm just gonna add this to the outer corner and just start working it in little circles. And I'm also gonna take this shade down right under the lower lash line a little bit. And then for the lid, I'm gonna pick up this shade Sediment to Be right here. And I'm just popping this right on my lid with my finger. This is just such a beautiful kind of taupey gray shade. I love this shade for giving kind of like a smoky eye vibe but it's not too deep, dark, and smoky. So if you have a lighter skin tone, it's just a really beautiful color. And then I'm just gonna pick up this shade I Dig It, which is this one right here. And I'm just gonna place this in the inner corner just to brighten that up slightly. And then I'm just doing the exact same thing over here. And that's why I love this palette so much because I just feel like I can get a really quick and easy eye look. Something neutral and easy to wear. Like I said, I'm going to my son's Christmas concert later. So I figured I would just keep my makeup simple today. And this really just makes that so easy. So anyway. Um, for mascara, I'm gonna use the new e.l.f. Lash Extender. I actually have a whole entire video on this, so I won't talk about it too much, but it is a tubing formula, and I have to say the more I've been using it, the more I really like it a lot. The first time I used it, I felt like I had to really build it up and add a lot of coats, but I've been using it for five, maybe six days now, and I feel like as it's kind of drying out a little bit, it's making it even easier to build it up and to apply. And truthfully, I haven't been using any other mascaras. Normally I would use the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions or I've been using the Hourglass Unlocked Extensions, which is another tubing formula, but I've really only been using this one since I got it. I really like it. And then when it comes to lips, I have two new options from the drugstore. The first one is from CoverGirl and these are their Outlast Lip Stain. So I got four colors, but these are kind of like those old school traditional lip stains, like the marker. And I remember them to be really, really drying in the past. So I wasn't sure if these were gonna be any different or if there is even a different way to make a lip marker, but I was curious to try them anyway. And they were pretty much just like I remembered. First of all, the colors, even though they look kind of lighter in the tube, they go on really deep and dark. Even the lightest colors I felt like kind of applied a lot of depth to my lips. So if you're looking for sheer subtle lip colors, these definitely are not gonna give you that. And also I did feel like these were very, very drying. I applied each one yesterday, just trying to show you guys some lip swatches and see what they look like on. And I have to say when I was applying these, they felt like they kind of tugged at at my lips and they had a lot of drag as I was moving them back and forth. And I also felt like they kind of went on patchy in areas so I would have to go back and fill them in a little bit more, which was kind of annoying. And even then I didn't feel like my lips looked completely even. And after this whole process of trying on all four colors, I just felt like my lips were so dry and really in need of some TLC. So if I were going to wear these, I would 100% wear a lip balm or something on top of them just to keep your lips a little bit more hydrated because on their own, they really didn't feel great. I mean, they're lightweight, they feel like nothing, um, which is a good thing but on their own, I felt like the dryness was pretty brutal, at least for me. So anyway, these were not my favorite, sadly. I don't really see myself using them very much. They do remind me of those old traditional lip stains. They're gonna last a long time. They're just super drying. And then I also got the new Milani lip stains. These are called the Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain. So I got two different colors. Again, they look like the shade 
shade selection went really dark. So I got the two lightest options that I could find, which were Mauve Mentality and Rose Rising. And these have a really creamy feel when they first go on and they give your lips a little bit of shine. It's not really glossy like a lip gloss. It's more of just like a dewiness, but I think these colors look really pretty. So I figured I'd just do some quick lip swatches for you guys. And I figured I'll do Rose Rising first. I think this is the lighter of the two. They have a vanilla scent that actually smells really good. And if I had to compare these to something, I would say they're very similar to a lot of the K-Beauty uh, lip tints that are like this. And also the Rare Beauty lip oils that they said were a lip oil, but are actually like a creamy lip stain. Um, they feel almost identical to those. So definitely a good affordable alternative or dupe. So here's the shade Rose Rising. And then let's try Mauve Mentality. This one's a little bit cooler toned and it's actually looking a little bit more reddish than it is mauve. So I think the name of the color is a little bit misleading, but I do think it's really, really pretty. This is a great like holiday color. Both of them are actually. And it just feels so comfortable on my lips compared to the CoverGirl Outlast. Yikes. All right, so I'm super curious to see how this is gonna wear throughout the day as well. So I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on everything. But so far I'm really excited about several of the things that I tried today. So anyway guys, I will go about the rest of my day. I'll see you guys back here in about eight hours or so. Hey guys, it's about 4 p.m. and I just wanted to do my final check-in. We have to leave for the concert in about an hour. So I'm gonna make this really, really quick. I still have to eat something. But um, I started applying everything around nine. So it's been roughly seven hours or so not the full day that I wanted it to be but I do feel like I gave everything a pretty good run so I'm gonna just zoom you guys in so we can take a closer look at the complexion products first so first of all the foundation still looks amazing I am shocked that it's holding up on my nose still and also just it's not settling into fine lines it doesn't look cakey it's not clinging to dry patches it hasn't settled into my pores it still has such a natural skin like finish but the coverage is still there and I'm really, really amazed by that. Also, I can still see the bronzer warming up my face nicely. I see it underneath the blush there, which of course that blush, I mentioned that that's a super long lasting formula. So that's still holding on as well, but I can definitely see the bronzer warming up my face. And then when it comes to the concealer, the Revlon on my right side still looks flawless. It's not creasing. It's not settling into the fine lines under my eyes. It's still giving great coverage. So I think this side looks really good. It looks just like it did when I first applied it. The L'Oreal side, not quite as much. I do kind of see that settling into the fine lines under my eyes just a tiny bit. It's not creasing, but I just feel like those lines look a little bit more prominent on this side. And also it didn't have as good of coverage to begin with. So I'm still seeing the darkness in the inner corner kind of coming through a little bit as well as at the outer corner. But I don't think this one looks bad either. I just think that the Revlon side looks a little bit better and a little more flawless. So with those two concealers, I think it really just depends on what you're going for, what your needs are. If you want more full coverage, I think this is beautiful. It looks so much better than Shape Tape, especially if you don't use too much, um, but it really just has such a nice smooth and flawless look for a full coverage concealer. And um, you know, if you don't need a lot of coverage, you just wanna brighten up your eye area a little bit. I think this one is really nice too for a light coverage formula. It was really lightweight and it continues to look smooth even hours later. So I'm really happy with them both. Of course, this CoverGirl Essence, the Skin Perfector, is amazing. This is like one of my favorite complexion products that I've tried in a really long time. Granted, it's only the first day. I'm gonna have to keep playing with it, but I was absolutely shocked at the coverage that this gave. I thought it was gonna be so sheer and it just, it looks flawless on the skin. So I am super happy with this. This is probably my favorite product that I've tried in a while. Also the Milani bronzer, love the color. I love the formula. It's exactly the same as their blushes. So if you love their blushes, you are going to love this as well. As far as things that I wasn't as crazy about, I mean the e.l.f. brow pencils, they did hold up just fine. I think what I didn't like about these is that they're so soft that the tip just dulls down a lot to the point where it's not sharp enough to to create those hair-like strokes and I had to keep twisting it up. I feel like it's gonna get used up really, really fast that way, but it does give that kind of soft powdered brow kind of a look. 
So if you like that, then I think you might enjoy these. Uh, the CoverGirl Outlast lip stains that I mentioned, I, I already said I didn't really like these that much. I just feel like they go on kind of patchy and they're super drying. And then as far as the Milani Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stains, I loved these initially. I think they look beautiful. They feel very comfortable. I did take some footage after I had lunch, which was a few hours later, and I noticed that the shine had worn away and some of the color had worn away a little bit, but it still looked pretty good, especially after going through eating and drinking. The color was still mostly there, so I felt like that was pretty good. And then about an hour before I went to film this video, I walked into the bathroom, I saw my lips in the mirror, and I came right in here just to do another check-in because I wanted to show you guys what it looked like after about six hours and most of the color had worn away. It really just left a ring around the outside of my lips, kind of like I applied lip liner and then I never filled it in. So that was kind of not ideal, especially because if I'm putting this on and then I'm gonna be out somewhere, I don't love that it wore away so unevenly and if I were at an event or a wedding or something and I was expecting my lip product to hold up and then I ate a meal and had something to drink and it ended up looking like this, I would be mortified. So it is unfortunately something that I think you're still gonna have to check up on. It's not gonna be bulletproof throughout the day. I think if you eat or drink something, you may have to go and just touch this up a little bit to make sure that it doesn't look completely uneven or patchy because that's what ended up happening to me. So I kind of have mixed feelings on this because I have other like bullet lipsticks and things that I think hold up pretty well during eating and drinking, but they also wear away a little bit more evenly and I just felt like this one didn't. So it's not a horrible product, but I'm not completely sold on it yet either. I'm gonna have to just test these more and see if it always wears that way throughout the day or if it was just something about today like that that happened. So anyway guys, some big hits and also some misses in today's video, but I hope that this was helpful for you and kind of helped you to make up your mind about some of these products. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to sit here and watch this video. I really, really appreciate appreciate it. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. And if you have some extra time and you've missed some of my Vlogmas videos, I'll go ahead and just put them right up here for you to check out next. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.